Okay, now there are two passages I want you to turn, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and then your second hand to go to 2 Timothy 3. We're going to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, as well as 1 Corinthians chapter 11. As you turn over to these uh, two passages, we'll look at them very soon. Review, history always should be reviewed because we always forget our history. Remember, the Great Awakening Revivals has fallen because of a revised Christian movement, and that is the Bible and right doctrine. So revised version came to the scene, destroyed the final authority. That was why the Great Awakening Revivals went downhill. There are some big names who participated in the Great Awakening Revivals. They fell prey into this, unfortunately. Revised dispensationalism came to the scene where it's mostly scholars, not preachers, scholars who try to correct anything that the classical dispensationalists indicated about dispensational salvations, and then they caved into more of Calvin, the Calvinist scholars. So scholars are the reason why everything fell apart. Scholars was what caused revised version. Scholar was what caused revised dispensationalism. It wasn't preachers. Even the classical dispensationalists, they started out as preachers, not really as scholars. So God always used preachers, not scholars. And then the scholastic realm has destroyed the Great Awakening revivals. Preaching of the Word of God. See that? That authority is lost. The Word of God, final authority, and the preaching of that Word. It became now more of a concept of higher ed. And like I've told you before, people have itching ears. So they want to hear something flowery, something that sounds educational, something that sounds uplifting, high and lofty, rather than making you feel bad, convicted over your sin. So that's been destroyed. Because of this revised Christian movement, the globalists who were not thriving during the Great Awakening revivals, they still uh, stubbornly persisted until Rhodes and the Round Table, they were able to flourish due to the revised Christian movement. They weren't able to flourish during the Great Awakening revivals before the revised Christian movement. Now, thanks to this revised Christian movement, coincidentally, the same timing, the globalists, the elites thrived through Rhodes and the Round Table, and now this is public knowledge, not even a secret anymore. Council of Foreign Relations, and then you got a lot of other big names, Trilateral Commission, Bilderbergers and the Rockefeller, a lot of other big names, Club of Rome, so now they're no longer a secret. Now they're public. The Independent Fundamental Baptist Church was the only thing from this Christianity that held the fort. All denominations fell apart. But now the Independent Fundamental Baptist movement fell apart because of the revised dispensationalism and some IFBs fell to the revised uh, version mentality. They don't endorse the Revised Version. However, they endorse the idea that the King James Bible is not perfect. So these two movements, Revised Christianity, just destroyed the IFB movement. So then what happened to our world, now we're in the 20, 21st centuries, is a Catholic communist culture. That is Laodicea. I have explained already and proven why it's a Catholic communist culture. I don't have to do it again. So we have to... Uh, get our right doctrine, we have to get our right movement, we have to get the right Christians back. If we're going to get the right book, the right doctrine, the right movement, then the Lord has to raise up some people. I've shown you before that the Independent Fundamental Baptist Church, they've truly gone apostate, and I've given you documentations. Big names from Sword of the Lord, the Heil, Jack Hiles crowd, and then other Christian schools. See, it's always schools, right? That just corrupted everything from Lee Robertson, PCC, Crown College, and etc. They have just fell to this revised Christianity movement. So I've given plenty of documentations on that. If it weren't for this one man, then the independent fundamental Baptist movement would have been lost, and I've proven that from documentations. 
And that is because of Peter Ruckman. If it weren't for Peter Ruckman, the independent fundamental Baptist church would have been lost. It would have been lost to the revised Christian movement. So because of him, the KJV Bible was able to be defended and also right doctrine was able to be defended. But the IFB movement, they will still condemn him. Even though there's a good number of IFBs, that switched to the KJV only movement. So a lot of them switched back to the KJV only movement because of Peter Ruckman's stand, but they still criticize him. And why is that? So uh, we'll be looking at some uh, documentations here. And this is found in my book, Ruckmanism Ruckus, but unfortunately, uh, it's, I don't think it's, oh, come on, what's going on with you? So I don't think that it is any longer in, okay, there we go. It is any longer in print. I mentioned about Time for Truth, that they would uh, probably still sell it, but I don't think they sell it anymore. I'm not sure. So anyway, this, uh, the, the book is Ruckmanism Ruckus. I'll just show you the pictures uh, and the, to prove the documentation. So this is on page 35 of Ruckmanism Ruckus. So the section fundamentalist for KJV only at, onlyism still condemned Dr. Ruckman. So despite the fundamentalists suddenly converting to the KJV only movement, they still attack Dr. Ruckman uh, for his KJV defense. Why? After all, Dr. Ruckman was primarily the one responsible for the impact of the KJV only movement. The grounds for their attacks were this. Ruckmanism goes to the extreme of believing that the King James Bible is a new inspiration or new revelation of God's superior in correcting the Greek and Hebrew Bible from which it came. Hence came the two words which define the new inspiration, new revelation, and KJV superiority over the Hebrew and Greek. Double inspiration and advanced revelation. Those two words became the primary excuse of fundamentalists to condemn Dr. Ruckman. Ian Paisley, a famous Irish preacher, close to Bob Jones Jr., so that's a big name among IFBs, proudly said about the KJV, now the question is asked, have I got God's inspired word in my hand? I want to answer it, yes, I have God's inspired word in my hand. Okay, good. But then he attacked Dr. Ruckman. Why? This new doctrine called dual inspiration, which affirms that the process extends to the authorized version, is known as Ruckmanism, after Dr. Peter S. Ruckman, who popularized this doctrine, had its beginnings in Rome. <laughs> Come on, man. All right. In January 16 to 18, 2008, at the Franklin Road Baptist Church King James Bible Conference, Shelton Smith, part of the Sword of the Lord crowd, and other fundamental ministers held services, quote, making the case for an inspired English translation. However, they also were rebutting the extremism of double inspiration. One of those rebutters of the so-called double inspiration was David Sorensen, who wrote Touch Not the Unclean Thing. His book was written to defend the KJV. He states on the back of his book that he documents the basic error of Peter Ruckman. So David Sorensen was a part of this conference where they attacked this double inspiration ideology, which supposedly originated from Peter Ruckman. Robert Leslie Heimers right, recognized that there were fundamentalists believing the inspiration of the KJV. But he also knew that those same fundamentalists rejected the idea about advanced revelation of the KJV. Uh, Heimers wrote, some men have seen the error of advanced revelation in Ruckmanism, and have rejected it while holding the preservation of the KJV or the inerrancy of the KJV. In Encyclopedia 2, Pensacola Christian, the text issue, it reads, PCC ex supports the exclusive use <clears throat> of the King James Bible <clears throat> for readers of English. This advocacy has caused some critics to confuse it with the Ruckmanism of Pensacola Bible Institute, it's kind of funny why they mentioned the whole name. I think yeah. they don't want a, their school to be confused with his school. That's why, because they're both from the same city, which is a separate, unaffiliated, independent Baptist school also, see, also in Pensacola, because they don't want to be affiliated with him. However, PCC simply considers the Greek Textus Receptus that forms the basis of the King James New Testament to be superior to other available New Testament texts. It does not espouse the advanced revelation or re-inspiration views of Ruckman and his followers. 
The fundamentalists who have finally woken up to stand for the KJV now continue to criticize Dr. Ruckman on the basis that he teaches double inspiration and advanced revelation. Okay, so that's their excuse why they continue to criticize him, why Dr. Ruckman never got any credit for it. Thank you so much for saving the IFB movement, Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. No, you know why? Not because of his new views of advanced revelation, double inspiration. It's because he criticized these idiots before. He called them out. They're fundamentalist heroes. So they got so scared. So they can't forgive him for that. When you attack their pope, then they won't forgive you. That's something to think about. No, excuse me, they're IFB pastors, not their pope. They're Baptist pastors. I'm so sorry. Let me correct myself. Now, the thing is, uh, concerning advanced revelation and double inspiration, I'm not going to uh, get into uh, that mess. I'm not in a, a, I'm not in a defense mode of uh, Dr. Upman's stance or these terminologies. But uh, if you buy that book, it will explain about what double inspiration, advanced revelation is referring to. Basically, in that book, it will point out to you that we believe, not that the KJV Bible that it was different from the originals and then it corrects it, but rather that because the King James Bible in English is more clear than what you get in Greek manuscripts, because when you translate and when you read those words, uh, Greek can have 13 different definitions for one Greek word. Right. So then the King James English is more clear with the word because it's in English and it's in the universal language, pretty much the universal language of today. And then concerning double inspiration, we believe that God, yes, he inspires twice. Why is that? Not because the King James Bible is the second inspiration, but because originals given by inspiration, but copies of the original, see, second inspiration are also given by inspiration. That's why we believe in double inspiration. And then advanced revelation is revealing things more clearly that are more advanced that you don't find in Greek manuscripts. Because in Greek, you can debate 13 different definitions. But having the one word already defined for you, and then seeing when you compare Scripture with Scripture, it becomes very clear. Uh, there are plenty of uh, passages on that, like numbers, for example. It said pictures. It didn't say images. It didn't say idols. That's much better for today because we can condemn uh, what, the Bible, what God negatively perceives pictures to be. So that's very important. And pictures are connected to idolatry there. So there's just a lot of examples, but I'm not going to get into that. If any of you have criticisms on errors in the King James Bible, then you just simply look at our playlist called Defending the KJV, and that'll be very thorough. It'll explain everything on so-called errors in the King James Bible, why the King James English has advanced revelation compared to Greek manuscripts, and then also Bible proofs on double inspiration, okay? But we're not going to get into that. Now, there are fundamentalists who lie about believing in the KJV. You've got to watch out for it. So even though there are fundamentalists that have switched to the King James Bible, and there's a good number who believe that the King James Bible is perfect, that don't mean that the IFB church that you would naturally go to when they say they're KJV only, that they believe the King James Bible is perfect. They choose that because it is the most accurate translation to them. They'll perceive it to be the word of God, not in every word, but just a general idea. So you have to keep your eyes peeled on that. So IFB churches, when they profess to be KJV only, you have to watch out for that. A simple way you can test them out is, do you believe that every single word in this King James Bible is perfect? That there is no error? That it doesn't have to be improvised? That it is perfect from the Lord? Then see how they answer. Don't ask them, is it the word of God? Do you believe that uh, the King James Bible, uh, that we should only use it? Because they won't... Uh, they won't uh, show their true colors, that they're KJV deniers. So I'll give you several examples, okay? These are very sneaky people. This was very bad during the 90s and 2000s, okay? But there's still a good number of them that do that. 
Although there are fundamentalists now believing in the King James Bible, there are still other fundamentalists doubting the King James Bible. An important note to keep in mind is that there are fundamentalists claiming that the KJV is the Word of God, while they are actually not believing that claim with all of their heart. Here's Robert Leslie Heimers, how he describes it. When we call the King James Version the Word of God in English, this statement actually corrects Ruckmanism. How so? <laughs> Don't we both believe in that? If understood properly, oh, so when they said the King James Version, the Word of God in English, they don't mean it like how you and I would perceive it. What's their understanding of it? Ruckman teaches that the KJV is given by inspiration coming down from heaven, so to speak, God giving the very words in English. Yeah. However, the very words were given by God only in Hebrew and Greek. Look at that. See that? So sneaky, pretty much liars, if you want to call it that, liars. Not in English. The KJV accurately carries over the words from Greek and Hebrew into English with only a minute number of human errors. Because of the high degree of accuracy of the KJV, it is perfectly proper in non-technical language. Just, no. Just tell me simply, do you believe that it is the Word of God or not? It's that simple. To call the, it, it is perfectly proper in non-technical language to call the KJV the Word of God. Now here's Ian Paisley, how he describes it in Bob Jones University. Let me state again emphatically that no translation is given by inspiration of God. Okay? Inspiration applies only to the original autograph. Inspiration has to do with the giving of the scriptures, not their translation. Okay, now look at this double tongue. And those who speak otherwise deceive those that they address. Yes, again, the King James Version was produced by men absolutely dedicated to the verbal inspiration of the Bible. Hence their use of italics to indicate an English word for which there is no equivalent in the original Hebrew and Greek. Now the question is asked, have I got God's inspired word in my hand? Well, no, you said. I want to answer it. Yes. <laughs> I have God's inspired word in my hand. What did you just say earlier? Yeah. The authorized version is a reliable and accurate translation of the verbally inspired word of God. And I can pin my hopes on its promises, knowing them to be the word of a God that cannot lie. I <laughs> See this? So you have to understand, when you go to your typical IFB churches, when they say they're KJV only, that don't mean they believe every word is perfect. Some of them believe there are some errors there. What they are, here's the more accurate answer for some of you who want to understand, they're, they are Greek only. They are not KJV only. Greek only meaning that they are textus receptus only. That's what it means. They are textus receptus only. Textus receptus only, what that means is that uh, they only believe the Greek manuscripts to be the final authority, and the KJV is right as long as the Greek and Hebrew is all right. See that? But actually, if you look at the Greek manuscripts or the Textus receptus that the IFB uh, loves and adores, it differs from the KJV, actually. It differs from the KJV. There was a Christian who went to churches that claimed to be KJV only, Cornerstone Baptist Church and Berean Bible Church, and associated with fundamentalists who claimed to be KJV only. These are Bob Jones College graduates, Lancaster Bible graduates, and Tennessee Temple graduates. Even though he was in those KJV only churches and associated with KJV only fundamentalists, he was later shocked that those same people actually thought the KJV had a few errors and was only a translation not given by inspiration but they were KJV only. So what happened? Here's another testimony. One pastor by the name of Dick Cook did not really know how the KJV is the word of God until he heard a man by the name of Clint At uh, Atkins teaching on the defense of the KJV. Pastor Cook had his faith in the KJV strengthened, but when he went to his Tennessee Temple Bible School, so that's a fundamentalist hero, Lee Robertson's school, 
His heart sank as soon as he heard his teacher professing. Now, students, I believe the KJV is the word of God, and it's the only book we'll use it in this class. And later saying, it does have errors in it. See that? Liars. Double tongue. Before, uh, so uh, this is a case with my father. Uh, I grew up in IFB, so I know what I'm talking about, actually. Before my father started an independent Korean Baptist church, he attended a fundamentalist church in New Hampshire. The pastor always held the King James Bible and proudly declared, this book is the word of God. Later, when my dad read P Problem Text, which is a book from Peter Uckman, the pastor lectured against him about Dr. Uckman. My father asked his pastor if he truly believed the KJV to be 100% correct. The pastor replied, I believe it is 99% correct because it is not the original Hebrew and Greek. My father was stunned and said, I thought you believed the KJV is without error because you always said that at the pulpit, that this Bible is the word of God without error while holding the KJV in your left hand. <laughs> All right. While those examples, there are fundamentalists claiming that KJV is the word of God, while they are not truly believing it, there are indeed KJV-only fundamentalists correcting the KJV with a Greek, Hebrew, or English dictionary. All right, so you have to watch out for that. Even Robert A. Joyner, who, used, who, was, uh, who was a managing editor of the Sword of the Lord previously, he stated from his research, most of the leading Bible schools and seminaries are not KJV only. Examples are Bob Jones University, Tennessee Temple, and Liberty University. The Baptist Bible Fellowship is the largest independent Baptist fellowship, and it is not KJV only. The Fundamental Baptist Fellowship said in their news bulletin for July to August 1984, we reject as heretical the concept that any translation of the Bible is given by inspiration which has in our generation fostered a cult. We believe firmly that inspiration ceased upon the closure of the canon of Scripture in the original autographs. We likewise reject the practice of exalting any version or translation to the position held uniquely by the original writings. Okay, so you've learned a lot right there. Now, <laughs> Dr. Uckman, no doubt, if it weren't uh, for his teachings, we would have been lost in right doctrine as well. Now, here are examples to prove it. Some salient doctrines that you and I would know about that IFB pastors and other Christian pastors or scholars did not believe in. Curtis Hudson, late editor of The Sword of the Lord, he criticized dispensational salvation. So remember, that is an important doctrine, believing that uh, not all salvation is the same throughout Genesis to Revelation. When there are verses teaching losing salvation, we simply say that's a different time period to a different group of people. That's why we believe in dispensational salvation. But IFBs didn't believe in that. Actually, they don't still believe in that today. You can even ask them, so that's evidence. Curtis Hutton says, here is yet another of Ruckman's plans of salvation, the so-called gospel of endurance. What a contradiction of terms. The word gospel means good news. It is certainly not good news to know that one must endure to the end in order to be saved. He gives several reasons why a person can supposedly lose his salvation during the tribulation. More of Ruckman's rabid ramblings are found. All right. Ken Hoven, founder of the creation science evangelism, he criticized the Genesis gap, or what I like to call the gap fact. He labeled it with communism, humanism, and Nazism. The acceptance of the gap theory opened the floodgates for these ideologies, which have, <laughs> wow, okay, which have caused untold suffering as well as hundreds of millions of deaths in the last two centuries. Uh, Kent, Kent, you're a little, <laughs> your time in prison probably made you a little bit more sane, okay? All right. Robert Leslie Heimer is a Baptist Bible Fellowship pastor criticized spiritual circumcision. He said, uh, it should be noted that no one but Ruckman has put out this theory concerning the soul as having a bodily shape and being stuck to the inside of the body, then cut loose at the new birth. Did this strange experience color his thinking regarding the new birth? What? That's a basic doctrine, yeah. spiritual circumcision. It proves eternal security. 
All right, so uh, here's Shelton Smith, current editor of The Sword of the Lord. Criticize salvation by works being mentioned in the Bible. Quote, now here's a clincher to make my position on this a virtual certainty. No Bible passage, absolutely none. Promises heaven for works. Here, this is at the very last breath of divine inspiration, Revelation 22, and it certainly is not introducing some heretofore undisclosed wrinkle in God's plan of redemption. Uh, Revelation 22, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may enter into the gates of the city. I mean, how are you going to go around that one? So that's why they uh, called him uh, uh, infamous cult of Ruckmanism. But if the truth was to be known, Dr. Ruckman, he was recognized by IFB heroes, believe it or not, who are remnants of the Great Awakening revival. Uh, let me just read it quickly. Dr. Ruckman is a simple pastor who earned his uh, PhD from Bob Jones. So Bob Jones Sr. himself preached in church services of Hugh F. Pyle, big name in Sword of the Lord and Fundamentalist, and had connections with Lester Roloff, Carl T. Lackey, and Buchant Vick. The evidence is Buchant Vick's grandsons, who preached at Dr. Ruckman's blowout many times. And Buchan Vick, remember, he's the founder of that uh, Baptist Bible Fellowship movement. That's the, hu that's the largest IFB movement that Wikipedia claimed. How about that? So Dr. Ruckman, he's not some strange cult guy. He's actually part of history that we're very indebted to. He actually saved the IFB movement. And if the IFBs uh, defended the KJV and taught the doctrines like they were supposed to, then we, could have, uh, then we could have all gotten along, but now it turned into a disgust to us that Bible believers don't really like to be called IFB. They want to be called more of Bible believers. But in other words, they believe what the Bible says. That's why we get the doctrines. That's why we believe every word. Amen. So our crowd, which we call ourselves Bible believers, were from the IFB. So IFB, we are still by denomination IFB, Independent Fundamental Baptist. But we are hesitant to be part of that crowd because of their history. Their history was they did not want to teach the right doctrines as much as they should have. And they had a denial of the King James Bible being perfect. So that's sadly, that's very unfortunate. So... Dr. Ruttman is a part of IFB history, whether the IFB people like it or not. You can't deny history. Here's one of the responses to the sword of the Lord. I will not attempt to defend Dr. Ruttman. He's quite able to do that for himself. Dr. G.B. Vick, that's Buchan Vick, stated from his pulpit in the presence of Bob Jones Jr. that Dr. Ruttman was the greatest Bible teacher in America. He said this two weeks before his death in 1976. And then two other witnesses are his grandsons, which is Larry Bartlett and Bill Bartlett, who preached at Dr. Upman's revival meetings. Now, this is from Hugh F. Pyle, all right? He wrote for Sword of the Lord, wrote many books for them. He described Dr. Upman as he had read thousands of books, including Greek philosophy and French infidelity. With a photographic mind, he could read a page while I was turning to it. He had a tremendous radio voice, could sing, and was a most amazing artist. Peter Ruckman already had a degree from the University of Alabama, but he went on to Bob Jones the next fall to get his master's and his PhD. When he preached for us in my pastorates, he always inspired our people to love God and to hunger to know more of the Bible. Amen. He is a genius in many respects. Dr. Bob Jones Sr. said, Ruckman was the most brilliant man ever to set foot on the campus. Now, did you hear that? So Doc Bob Jones Sr. called him the most brilliant man ever in campus. Buchan Vick called him the greatest Bible teacher. Hugh Pyle claimed that Dr. Upman had an AI photographic memory. <laughs> There's no doubt that he's a genius in many respects. Lester Roloff, famous fundamentalist guy that I told you about before, Amen. who many fundamentalists admire, was such a close friend of Dr. Upman that he even used his commentaries on Genesis and Revelation, which also contained a friendly note from him. Moreover, he passed them down to one of his associates named Ron Robinson for studying the Bible. For some of you who don't know, that's the father of uh, Pastor John Robinson in Oregon, 
And then uh, the father of Paul Robinson, pastor of a Bible-believing church in Alaska, and then missionary Robinson. Okay, so uh, our hist- uh, a lot of people don't know about this history. A lot of people don't know about the history. So we, there is no doubt whether you like it or not, he is salient in our history. And I don't know why... Uh, Bible believers today, they don't really like to talk about that. They go as so far as IFB. But the IFB history is tainted, especially a lot of scandals I told you about before. There were a lot of scandals and corruptions. That's the rotten fruit when you don't believe the Bible to be perfect, one. And number two, you don't study more and advance more in right doctrine. So that's the fruits of it. It's a rotten fruit. So there is no doubt that uh, Dr. Upman... He changed the scenery for the IFB movement. He saved it. So now I will finally talk about their histories. Two of the greatest heroes that I believe uh, that rescued our Bible-believing Christianity and we would not be here today is Jack Chick and Peter Ruckman. So Peter Ruckman, he's already mentioned so many times because he's salient in IFB history. So look, I didn't want to mention him either, to be honest. Because I was going to talk about his life, so it just sounded redundant. But it's so crucial because you can't separate him. To talk about our roots, you can't separate Ruckman. You can. He's a part of it. Go to every big shot IFB pastor today. Mention Peter Ruckman. They know who he is. They do. That's how, that's how salient he is in our history to IFB people, whether they like it or not. All right, now we're going to uh, talk about the history of Peter Ruckman and Jack Chick. My recommendation, uh, all of the stuff that I'm going to give to you is documented in their bios. So Jack Chick's bio, you don't know Jack. And then Peter Ruckman's bio, the full cup. I would recommend everybody who starts out with knowing Dr. Ruckman is not on undependable lying internet. You should start out with his, from the man himself, his bio. That bio helped me understand a lot about the way he talked, he behaved, he preached and taught. If you don't get to know the guy, then you have no right to judge just because of a cut or edited portion from some biased individual who has an agenda against the man. I mean, the same thing with Jack Chick too. You should, I mean, it's so messed up. And I'm going to kick the internet soon, actually. Uh, That's part of our history, whether we like it or not. It is part of our current events and our future. So if I have time, I'll talk to you about the history of the internet and how this all came together, which is very interesting, all right? If we have time, though. But anyway, so uh, Peter Ruckman was born November 19th, 1921. Jack Chick was born April 13th, uh, 1924. Uh, Peter Ruckman's history came from military soldiers, believe it or not. I believe you can go f- uh, as far back as to World War I and the Civil War. So he came from a line. Uh, he was uh, buried. I was there at his funeral service. He, w- he received a military funeral, military soldier's funeral. Jack Chick himself, he grew up in a family where uh, he had uh, trouble with his mother, and Jack Chick, he was always an aspiring artist. He loved to draw. Believe it or not, Peter Ruckman, as we have heard from Hugh Pyle, was an artist himself. Jack Chick was into acting, and he actually entered into acting school. But then World War II happened, so then he got called off to the military. So Peter Ruckman and Jack Chick, they both went to the military. Both of them picked up cussing from there, actually. But this is very interesting about those two. So you can learn a lot of garbage from the military, learn a lot of sin from the military, but those two never got involved uh, with fornication, which is very weird. So they never got involved in sexual sins, these two in the military. Peter Ruckman, to him, it just was uninteresting to him. I guess because of his uh, IQ mindset. That's how it's built, so it's just weird, maybe. So it was just uninteresting to him. He would mention that sometimes his, uh, his buddies would be the one doing stuff at the back seat, while he would prefer to be the driver or the guy who does adventurous stuff. 
he was a prankster. He liked to do something adventurous. He was that type of man. Jack Chick, he found the love of his life in acting school, married her, and then stuck with her, even when he was in the military. Couldn't think about cheating on her. So that's very strange. I think the Lord saw that they both had some character, that they wouldn't succumb to weaknesses, So, which is why probably the Lord used them. I'm not sure about that. But anyway, uh, Jack Chick, he picked up cussing from the military. Peter Uckman had a foul mouth himself, but the Lord would transform those two lives around. Uh, Jack Chick, when he uh, married uh, his girl, the in-laws, they couldn't stand his cussing. So then the mom said, he needs to listen to Charles Fuller on the radio. So remember Charles Fuller, how the Lord used him during the last uh, phase of the Great Awakening Revival? So Jack Chick, it was under a radio station from Charles Fuller that he got under conviction about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and Jack Chick received Christ for his salvation. Peter Uckman, he was a radio speaker himself, and it was in that radio station, just like Charles Fuller, a radio preacher, Hugh Pyle was preaching on the radio as well. But Ruckman bumped into him when Hugh, when Hugh Pyle was... Uh, coming to the station and then coming off the station. And then Ruckman said, what you got, preacher? And Hugh Pyle said, I got the Lord. What you got? It was during that time Peter Ruckman was suicidal and he was very depressed and his life was a wreck. He, earlier, he uh, just stumbled at a Methodist, uh, I think it was a Methodist church, and then he was crying and begging, oh Lord, I'm just sick and tired. I'm just sick and tired. Show me something. And then it was soon after that he bumped into Hugh Pyle. Hugh Pyle showed him the gospel and then said, all right, uh, just call upon him the best way you can to receive Christ for salvation. And Ruckman's like, well, I don't know how to pray. And Hugh Pyle said, just say it the best way you can. So remember, Ruckman had a foul mouth. So the best way he could from his heart was, Lord, I am a blankety blank blank sinner. I deserve a blankety blank blank hell. And I don't deserve anything, blank any blank worth. So I believe Jesus died, buried, resurrected. Please save my blank any blank soul from a blank any blank blank hell. And then Hugh Pyle was laughing and he smiled and he said, You meant that with all your heart? And Peter Upman said, You blank any blank blank right I did. <laughs> the Lord changed his life and then he got saved. Jack Chick, he was entering, entering the acting world that time. And then it was that time he saw the corruption in Hollywood. So remember, Hollywood was dominant that time and was ruining so many young people's lives. Jack Chick, when he was entering there, he heard the producer in the office talking to a director about a pretty girl that he had. And he said, uh, did she sleep with anybody? No. Have you slept with her? No. Don't come back until you sleep with her. So when the director left, Jack Chick got scared because uh, he was into the acting business and then his wife had experience with that as well. So when he came in and the producer talked to him, Jack Chick would have had some chances, but after that meeting he left and he never returned to Hollywood again Amen. because he was scared for his wife. Amen. So during uh, that time, Jack Chick left the acting career and then he uh, worked for some big projects, actually, that was pretty interesting. It had some secret stuff, some government stuff. And then he did some uh, drawings for them. At the side, he got into drawing some comics. So believe it or not, uh, where you get your famous popular cartoon, The Flintstones, it would not have been born had it not been for Jack Chick's drawings. So if you read his bio, it'll show you that he was the one that introduced the primitive guys who were living in modern family generation times. And then it paved the way for the Flintstones. That dog, Dino, a lot of people don't know. It came from Jack Chick's idea. And if you look at his comic books, that's why he always has a dog. Fang, all right, the dog Fang. So I don't know if some of you knew about that, but if you look at Charlie's Ants, if you look at all the Chick Tracks again, Find that dog, all right? He's nearly there all the time, same signature. So that idea of a dog that
That idea of a dog in the middle of the cartoons just randomly popping out of nowhere, showing up nowhere. I mean, that's why the Flintstones, I believe, they were, that's why they inserted a dog in there as well. It all burked because of the, had it not been for Jack Chick. He paved the way for the Flintstones. Could have been famous, made money, but uh, that's not how the acting world works or the, the art world works. The Lord had different plans for him. He was going to make him the world's number one published author. God. That's what the Lord was going to do with him. The Smithsonian Institute even, the Smithsonian Institute even has his uh, chick comic on their, on their institution, and then he's dubbed the world's number one published author by them. And then the Lord raised up Peter Uckman to be the world's number one Bible teacher, predominantly the King James Dispensational Movement. Because of Hugh Pyle, he entered the IFB movement. He attended Bob Jones University. It was there that he was uh, dismayed to see the professors correcting the King James Bible. So Dr. Uckman, he, because of that anger against the, the professors who corrected the King James Bible, he corrected them. Hence, he became very infamous after that. But believe it or not, he, when he was an evangelist for the IFB people, sort of the Lord advertised him. That's a famous, that's the number one IFB news source. And sort of the Lord said, this man will answer your question 45 seconds or less. <laughs> Would you believe that? So he was famous as an evangelist for 10 years. He was not a teacher. He did not start Pensacola Bible Institute yet. He wanted to be an evangelist. Billy Graham crusade, as a matter of fact, they even contacted him. So, but the Lord had other plans for him. Hugh Pyle saw that he had a gift. He was going to be the world's number one Bible teacher. And then he finally surrendered the call to start Pensacola Bible Institute, PBI. He started that institute, and then he was able to teach the right doctrine defending the King James Bible. Finally, the revised Christian movement was being attacked. It finally fell apart. Underneath the scholars' uh, weight and authority, the scholars finally were being attacked, and rightfully so. Too comfortable behind their books and their degrees. They thought they were invincible and no one can attack them. But then Peter Ruckman came to the scene, and then he kicked their tails. Jack Chick also kicked their tails when he wanted to witness the gospel, but he was a very shy man. He didn't have the boldness to witness to people. So why not give out tracts? So what he did, he took his ability that the Lord has given to him, his artistic ability, in a kitchen, in his own kitchen, he started his first chick track. And it was, why no revival? Why no revival? And he, he attacked the Christian churches too. How That's the first chick track, attacking Christian churches. Dr. Upman's first books, attacking Christian scholars. What's going on? The revised Christian movement was finally being under attack. The apostate Christianity was finally being kicked to open their eyes. Unless the Christians get their eyes open first, then you can't uh, kick the rest of the world or open their eyes. As the book of Peter said, it scarcely, it, judgment must begin with the house of God. Judgment must begin with the house of God before we do the rest of the world. So that was, uh, that's who they were targeting. They attacked Christian pastors, uh, labeled Dr. Up, people who got into Dr. Upman's materials as Ruckmanites, but that's just so lame. Calvinists boast themselves to be Calvinist yeah. after John Calvin, hypocrites at their finest, you know. So it doesn't matter. So, and then Jack Chick, they criticized his material as being uh, sensational, as being uh, so controversial, because Jack Chick put every religion that he was able to name, and he wrote a chick track against them all. I mean, he got the left-wingers, the, these kind of little, guy, little guys, just attacking him, name-calling him, and they got so mad. Jack Chick was even on TBN. That's the largest Christian network that time, Trinity Broadcasting Network. Paul and Jan Crouch, if you look at his bio, there's a picture of him with them, and they're looking through his chick tracks. Jack Chick said when he was in one of the waiting rooms, looked like Jan Crouch didn't know. She's one of the founders of TBN, but Jan Crouch was spewing out numbers, like how many people were there, and then the ratings, and then the money, like a machine. 
So then Jack Chick realized that this was a clever, sneaky woman. She is not the frigid, you know, meek Christian lady that you like to see on TBN. She was very tricky, so Jack Chick caught that one. So then uh, when Jack Chick uh, published his uh, Chick track, The Gay Blade, then uh, TBN threw almost a fit, and they said, we can't pu publish that on our uh, network. And Jack Chick said, why? Because TBN, because of TV, uh, TV and certain legal matters, then they're supposed to put a sodomite also with them because that way there's equal information being shared, not one information. So then Paul Jan Crouch threw a fit on that one. But then Jack Chick, he exposed Paul and Jan Crouch, TBN, for their ties with the Catholic Church. So obviously he didn't become famous after that. But Christian bookstores, they denounced Jack Chick. They didn't want his materials. They saw him as controversial. They didn't want anything to do with him. They didn't want anything to do with uh, Jack Chick. And then Dr. Upman, the schools warned all their graduates about Dr. Upman, that they are to stay away from him, that they are to run away, that they are to keep at bay. And so the whole Christian world condemned Jack Chick and Peter Upman. When you hear that, then you know that's your crowd. Right. And you know that's your crowd. If you get apostate Christians attacking some Christian from being extreme, then you know that, oh, I think this might be a good guy. <laughs> so there are three enemies that you'll notice throughout the 20th, 21st centuries that have become the most powerful tools that brainwashed everybody. Media, and that can include technology. Government and schools. That's the whole world system. Now think about it, the IFB crowd, they never really attacked these three. You notice that? They just boasted about old fashioned, being traditional. That was it. If you wanna attack the world, you gotta attack the centers the, the exact tools that spread their garbage. If it weren't for these three, you wouldn't change your generation. You know that? What changes the mind of a generation is you need the power of the media, you need the power of the government, and then you need the power of the schools. They can transform one generation like that. Literally one generation. Ruckman and Jack Chick attacked all three of them, finally. So now... Chick tracks were spreading like wildfire. So that was, the, that was the media thing, pretty much. That was spreading out information. Jack Chick, he used his artistic ability not for the media world, but for Chick tracks. The media world condemned Chick tracks. They hated Chick tracks. Chick tracks were becoming popular. As a matter of fact, famous comic artists were mentioning about Jack Chick. You can't separate Jack Chick, he's become very famous. And then the schools were mentioning Peter Ruckman and warning him, if you talk about KJV onlyism, Peter Ruckman is a part of that. They cannot separate from that. Uh, James White, in his uh, famous book, King James Only Controversy, that all the scholars were recommending, he had to mention Peter Ruckman in there. So then the schools were being attacked. Finally, all three were being attacked by Peter Ruckman and Jack Chick. And the apostate Christians were being kicked, finally. The Lord used these two men in our Laodicean age to revive Bible-believing Christianity. Now we come to the Bible here. In the last days, it is salient that you need men to follow. That's important. The world wants to scare you that you're following a cult leader because you're following some individual. They try to trace all of your beliefs to one man so that they can make it look like Ellen G. White thing or a Joseph Smith thing. That's a tactic of the brainwashing of this wicked world. The Bible demands that in the last days, there should be individuals and heroes who stand up that you're supposed to follow, that you're supposed to recall their doctrine, their teaching. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and then verse 1, so I think I gave the wrong verse. Sorry about that if I did. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Look at verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 
So truth is stomped away, even though higher ed, ever learning, is increasing. During this time, you need men to follow. You need some people to take a stand. Notice right here what Paul said at verse 10. Verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. See that? So Paul said that you're supposed to uh, recall, you're supposed to follow men, what they taught you. Look at 1 Corinthians 11. Is man the final authority? No, Christ is. But if Christ raised up some men to use, you want to keep your eye for those, pe those men and then join their movement, join their churches. Think about it. This is just common sense. How would an IFB movement exist without men? How would even uh, the Protestant Reformation that broke out from Catholicism exist without men? See that? Whether you like it or not, men are salient. Men are salient because they create the movement. Dr. I mentioned in his church history, man, movement, machine, monument. So that's how history always works. You need to find a man to follow and then we can create a movement. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Paul demanded, be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. See that? So then what if man falls apart? We don't worry about that. We follow them as long as they follow Christ. Now, whether you unconsciously know this or not, you are already doing that. You might say, how so? Because whatever I'm teaching or preaching to you, you're thinking, well, is it found in the Bible? Is this what Christ wants? You're filtering me through Christ. You're filtering me through Scripture. So you're agreeing with my preaching and teaching. You're coming on the altar, getting under conviction, not because I say so, but because you're filtering me through the lens of Christ. Now, here's another thing. What if I sin and mess up? That's not going to shake your faith or get you out of this church. You might say, why? Because you're not following me, you're following Christ. But you follow me as long as I'm following Christ. And then when there are times that I don't follow Christ, you just don't follow that. It's that simple. Why? Because everybody's a sinner, including yours truly, Peter Ruckman and Jack Chick. Do I still make mistakes? Of course I do. So that's why it doesn't shake us up about following men because we follow Christ. See? So when they try to scare you about following man, don't let that scare you. You are uh, following, if the, cult, if the world and the apostate Christians are trying to scare you about following men, don't let that scare you. No, you're not. You're following Christ. But you follow them because as long as they follow Christ. See that? Paul said, be followers of me even as I also am of Christ. So it's important to know what they taught, the doctrine, the patience, their example, their life, and we are to follow that. So finally, the globalists were also being attacked. So I mentioned media, schools, the government as well. So the elites were finally attacked. Jack Chick was criticized because of his Alberto Rivera comics uh, and his uh, Crusader comic, The Broken Cross. It was based off of uh, John Todd and Alberto Rivera's testimonies. And if you look at Jack Chick's bio, those two men mentioned that the most important uh, issue ever is the King James Bible, those two said. And those two knew about elites, globalists, conspiracies. But they realized the debate and the issue over the King James Bible was the most important. That was crucial. That's what John Todd and uh, Alberto Rivera told Jack Chick. So Jack Chick, through his comics, exposed the globalists, the conspiracies, the elites, especially the Catholic Church. That's why Christian bookstores didn't want anything to do with him. See that? Because the Catholic Church and their followers, their hands were in every, all types of Christian organizations. Because of that, remember the Vatican, they always followed the globalists. So Jack Chick attacked them through his comics. Dr. Upman, his church history book, his church history book, the number one enemy was the Catholic Church. He put them from beginning to end. He put them as part of anti-church history. Dr. Upman wrote a book, Black is Beautiful, 
about the elites, the conspiracies. He knew all of that. He knew all of that. There's audio recordings or MP3s about he has on UFOs. UFOs. So Dr. Upman knew all this stuff. If you read his Revelation commentary, I've given it to people who are into Alex Jones stuff, all right? Alex Jones is not the guy who gave you all the true stuff. Peter Upman, Jack Chick was long ago, guys. Bible believers were ahead of their game. They just weren't well known because they didn't have the internet. Jones had it. I'm going to explain that part later, okay? So that's going to be eye-opening. That internet changed everything. So anyway, Dr. Uckman and Jack Chick, they were exposing the truth. And like I told you before about Dr. Uckman's revelation commentary, I've given it to people who are into Alex Jones stuff. When they read that, they were surprised to read the date that it was from the 60s to 70s. It was, long before Dr. Uh, it was long before Alex Jones, the Revelation commentary. And all the stuff confirmed from their research what they were getting into about conspiracies. <laughs> Would you believe that? See, uh, there was no doubt. These two men were prophets. They knew a lot. You know Jack Chick's comic, The Last Generations? The Last Generation. You ever seen that comic? It showed about and uh, the last days of the church before the Antichrist came, how Christians were being persecuted, and they were ushering the Antichrist kingdom. But then the cover was a guy from a medical society with... Don't tell me that the Lord did not use these two men. These two men were prophets, man. If, if you want evidence, look at Dr. Roman's Revelation commentary book. And then look at Jack Chick's Last Generation comic. Look at Jack Chick's Crusader comics based on Alberto Rivera. Look at Dr. Roman's book, Black is Beautiful. And then, and these were from the 50s to 60s to 70s, you have to realize. They were way ahead of their game. The globalists were finally getting attacked. The Vatican was finally getting attacked. In Catholic conferences, uh, when my family uh, was in one of the Catholic conference meetings passing out chick tracks, they all knew what it was. They were all trained. They were warned about uh, chick tracks. That, again, put it as one of their forbidden book material, forbidden literature material, Chick Tracks. The Va Jack Chick got the Vatican's attention. He sure got the Vatican's attention. Peter Uckman, he took on the Catholic's champion, who is still one of the champion debaters today. His name is Carl Keating. Still alive. He's still a champion. Look at that debate. Dr. Uckman crushed him. It's still on YouTube. Just type down Peter Uckman, Carl Keating. Carl Keating was trembling and sweating. This guy is a lawyer. He's a champion for the Catholic faith. And he just got smashed by Peter Ruckman. During break time, some of the priests were going to Carl Keating and saying, was what Ruckman said true? Was what he said true? Was what he said true? That was from one of the people who attended that actual debate. So, so he saw all that. He was surprised. So it was just amazing how the Lord used these two men mightily. For his glory. Finally, up to the core, the, the evil trinity was finally being attacked. Long before you thought the internet was the one. See, no, God uses men. God uses men. God always used a church. God always used preacher. Not someone to start a blog or something online. That's important to understand. God always used preachers. This is long before Alex Jones. See? He only became famous because of the internet, guys. So you have to realize that these men were way ahead of their game. Well, Peter Ruckman, he passed away April 21st, 2016. A great hero died. Jack Chick, he was very sad that day when he heard about Peter Ruckman's death. He wrote this, I am in mourning over the loss of a dear friend. Fox Television cannot stop talking about a supposedly brilliant man formerly known as Prince but one of the great generals of the 20th and 21st century died the same day, and there isn't a peep from the media. We had many things in common. Both of us were sign painters. Both of us were illustrators. And both of us were saved within a year of each other. We were on two sides of the continent. So he, Ruckman was Florida. Chick was California. The Lord had the both extremes to hit all the way throughout America to the center like that. We were on two sides of the continent, winning souls in different ways. 
but with faith in the same God and the same King James Bible. And both of us are hated by the same Christian leaders. Amen. Amen. I know that's my crowd then. On the other hand, how could I have bonded with a guy with such a high IQ? But God used both of us in our different ways. God used him as a brilliant man and me as an average cartoonist, both with a heart for the lost. Right now, I imagine Pete's enemies are happy. Rome is certainly happy. The critics against the King James Bible are happy, but I'm not happy. He was one of a kind. There are so many former students who have gone out into the mission field who are grateful for Pete's encouragement and teaching, who are taking risks all over the world because of the investment Pete made in their lives and the burden for the lost he shared with them. But I am sure they are still heavy-hearted about his leaving them. You know, Pete always advertised three chick tracks in every issue of the Bible Believer's Bulletin. I never asked for it, but Pete always put them in. He was always encouraging to me, too, selling our tracks and books in his Bible Baptist bookstore. Pete has gone on to his reward, and I remain. But I will never forget Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. And no matter your opinion of him, you can't say you didn't know where he stood for the Lord and for the King James Bible. Jack Chick said that he was uh, grieved over the loss of a dear friend. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, I'm sure you all want to see that, right? So let me. So that was his quote over there. But uh, anyway, uh, I'll move over to the side here so people can read it for themselves. But Jack Chick, when he gave that statement, he said that he was sad over the passing of a friend. What I like about what he mentioned right here is that, um, let's see, he mentioned right here. Mm -hmm. The last line, Pete has gone on. Uh, I wish this thing wouldn't show so much like that. But anyway, Pete has, oh, it's not uh, drawing, whatever. Okay, so this line right here, you can tell Jack Chick was mourning. Pete has gone on to his reward, and I remain. Ugh, I hate it when it does that. It's the devil, whatever, okay. <laughs> I'm done, I'm done, okay. He said, Pete has gone on to his reward, and I remain. So he was sad that Peter Ruckman went to heaven ahead of him. Well, you know what happened? Same year, the Lord took Jack Chick uh, home. I think the Lord answered Jack Chick's desire. They both died the same year. Isn't that something? Now, let me show you something very uncanny, okay? This is weird. 2016, they both died. Do you know when the internet phenomenon of truth bursted out? That all scholars, even the Oxford Dictionary, mentioned post-truth. You know what year they put it at? 2016 because of the election when Trump got in. Isn't it interesting the Lord took these two men promoting truth home the same time when truth or post-truth or whatever was being declared all over the world. Now the fight is, you can tell, is information now. That's where our history will come in. All right, there's more to... There's more to show, all right, later. But let me give you a last quote. This is from James Melton, what he said about Ruckman. Over the past few days, many of us have grown contemplative and have taken time to express our gratitude for the righteous warrior who fought so long and valiantly among us and was then called home to glory. If the following words appear too lofty and exaggerated, it is only to those who never knew him, never understood him, or his calling, and never had their lives totally transformed by his instruction. Let's give it uh, one shot right here. Peter Sturgis Ruckman stood as a righteous giant among men and a choice instrument in the hand of God. His enduring devotion to our Lord Jesus Christ through the better part of seven decades saved sinners and strengthened saints by the thousands. In addition to being a beloved patriarch to his family and a faithful pastor to his church, to hungry Bible believers the world over, Peter S. Ruckman was a spirit-gifted preacher of God's Word, a theological genius, 
a master teacher, an accomplished artist, an exhaustive author, a champion of truth, and a fearsome warrior. Dr. Ruckman was put here to be a rock-solid teacher for serious Christian soldiers, and we are exceptionally blessed and honored to have been counted worthy to receive his instruction. By the grace and goodness of God, much has been entrusted to us, so much shall be required of us. Doc's war has ended, but we remain on the battlefield, and the hottest battles lie ahead. May we renew our commitments to our Savior, gain a fresh new zeal and vision, and then press onward. Brother Ruckman fought the good fight and finished his course. By the grace of God, we must do the same. Amen. And that has been ignored by Bible believers, unfortunately. In our history, Peter Ruckman, Jack Chick paved the way. But Bible believers are too much sitting on their blessed assurance. They're not on the attack mode. They're more thinking about building a, building a church or something like that. That's it. They're not in the attack mode against the world. 2016 was such a coincidence when they passed away. That's when the world changed. That's when people started searching for truth. Now, where are the Bible believers? Where are the Bible believers? We will now come to 2016 and see where you come from now and how you ended up here. Two more lessons and we'll be done with our history. Father God, I pray that today's teachings have been a blessing to the hearers, transformed people's lives, made us full aware, and then uh, beyond, the, beyond the mode, beyond the mode to attack against this wicked world, to keep holding up Bible-believing truth for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.